Aaron Gouge, the junior, with his 25th points. As, as we discussed earlier, it's very critical that uh, he did tilt because otherwise he wouldn't have had that, uh, be able to look at the basket that easy. Downs trying to get maneuverability, and they're going to get Aaron Goose with a foul. Do you, do you smell a little rubber from time to time? We can smell a little rubber. Yes, sir. You can, especially when the on a fast break and they have to come to a stop very quickly. They you smell it quite often. Means it's been a good year if you get in transition. <laughs> Mike Applegate hits the first of two, his ninth point. It is 46-35. Applegate, the team's leading scorer. And he's in double figures. Brendan Downs also in double figures. He has 13. That's only the third, or the sixth point in the half for Arizona. And we're almost halfway through the second half. Aaron Goose behind Wilkes. Nice defense by Brendan Downs. Gets it to Fick inside the lane. Danny Fick, his 11th point. That's what he averages a game. Under 10 minutes to play. Bounce pass to Applegate. And shoots and misses over number 10, James Patton. As the season progresses, can, can you kind of see some of the role that players like Patton plays and maybe uh, yes, sir, Tyler sir. Garner and what their ability is? Yes, if an everyday uh, viewer just watched it, they wouldn't really see the effect that they have. They wouldn't see the uh, back picks that they set that leaves people like uh, David Wilkes and Aaron Gouge open. And you know, uh, especially Tyler, his defense is outstanding. He's improved so much from last year. And just kind of the little stuff is uh, chair position and back picking. That's very crucial in wheelchair basketball. Well, the strategy more compressed when you come inside the lane. I mean, there's only so much you can do when you get clogged up in the lane with four or five players. Yeah, it really is. And that's when, when your class ones and class twos really help you out, those small guys setting the picks on the big men. Look at that three. Nothing but net. Brendan Downs. That is his third three-pointer. 16 points for the sophomore. 51-39 the count. Danny Fick almost lost control. Gets it to David Wilkes. Misses the easy shot inside. Waiting for it is Brendan Downs. Down circles around Tyler Garner. And misses baseline right. In the second half, Arizona with six fouls. UT Arlington with four. Aaron Goo's going to go to the baseline. He'll drop it off to Garner. And he scores. That's when Tyler is really effective is coming off the pick because they really don't pay that much attention to the guy who usually makes the pick. So when he rolls, it leaves uh, Tyler wide open with that. Tyler, the son shot. of assistant coach Doug Garner from Hot Springs, Arkansas, 53-39. Outside to Ulrich. Block tips by Patton. And then inside, Applegate trying to get a shot around two or three pairs of arms. There's assistant coach Doug Garner. Got a coach's timeout taken by Arizona with 7.59 to go in the game. The season started for Arizona in late January, likewise for the Wheelchair Mavericks. And if you missed any parts of tonight's game, you can see this matchup and other great Metro sports matchups on Time Warner Cable's Channel 960. Tune into Channel 960 on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for a day of college basketball action. Or you can catch your favorite local sports anytime, day or night, on Time Warner Cable On Demand. Remember, Channel 960 and Video On Demand are free to all Time Warner digital cable customers. Some of our viewers may be thinking if Able Body 
uh, people can actually play wheelchair basketball. But everyone that plays uh, wheelchair basketball here is uh, considered a person with an irreversible lower extremity disability. So everyone actually has a disability here. But uh, other uh, countries such as Canada, the uh, able body can actually go and sit in a wheelchair and actually play wheelchair basketball. But for any division here in the States, there has to be a criteria. Yes, sir. In the downs. 7.53 to go in the game. In closer yet to Eric Harris. That is his fifth point. It is 53-41. That's a good point, Corey. Thanks for alerting our viewers to that because they may be under the impression that just anybody and everybody that has a disability can get in a wheelchair and play basketball. It's not Correct. the case. Goose trying to get another shot. Wilkes will and miss. Rebound number 12, Ryan Stevens. Now you're from out west Texas way and you have another year of college left, is that right? Yes, sir. I'll graduate in December 2008. What's your major? Biomedical engineering. And you're from a little class 1A town out west. Yes, sir. Rotan, Texas. Downs around Garner. Gets it kind of close. Here's Stevens, and Stevens is foul. Team foul number five on the wheelchair Mavericks with 6.49 to go in the game. If I'm not mistaken, I think that is David Wilkes' fourth foul. And Ryan Stevens at the line. You're right, that's his fourth. He's got 10 points. And the sophomore with a couple of shots. And here in intercollegiate, they are only allowed five and not six like they are in the professionals, the foul count. How much time is spent just on free throw shooting? Because uh, the majority, the range of shots, you know, you, we've seen a couple of threes, we've seen three threes, but the majority of the shots, Corey, what, about 10 to 12 feet out? Yes, sir, they're about that, so free throw shooting is very crucial in practice. Look at the lean, and Wilkes finally able to get a shot off. He was not going to be denied. Great. Unfortunately missed, but UTA leads by 12. The great part about tilting is that you can actually see, but sometimes, such as an instance down there, he actually lost his balance before he shot. Boy, Harris was jarred when he took the shot. Conley saves it. Taken away by David Wilkes. Nice camera work by the steal of Wilkes as he stayed with it. And Danny Fick wants to take a timeout for UTA with exactly six minutes to play. Any other points of interest you might want to point out to our viewers, Corey, about maybe what's uh, ahead for the wheelchair Mavericks? Uh, yes, sir. They have a tournament in Illinois next, uh, this next upcoming weekend. And I think uh, as of March 25th is the Final Four tournament. Now, when would a team leave for a tournament, in this case, when they go to the University of Illinois? When would you leave? And how much uh, practice time is allowed? Uh, they usually leave, if, if it's a Friday and Saturday tournament, travel day is usually on Thursday morning. So you'll fly out of DFW on Thursday morning, early Thursday. And a pretty good bunch to travel with. No, do what, sir? Pretty good bunch to travel oh, with yes, and hang sir. around with. Oh, yeah. But the Final Four tournament, they might leave an extra day early just so they can, uh, because each team has scheduled certain amount of hours for practice in the gym that they're going to be playing in. So they might actually leave on Wednesday for a Final Four tournament, which is in uh, Edinburgh, Pennsylvania this year. I was able to look at your 